Oh, never mind. Bullock, please. Yes, she's a patient. I know it's after hours, but this is her sister and it's an emergency. Hello, Jean? Darling, I'm sorry to waken you. Marjorie's gone. I went to the drugstore. I came back in 20 minutes and she was gone, clothes and all. No, no, no. No, there's a note. Arnie took her. Customary for a private detective's clients to call on him at his office. But Jean Bullock was unable to move from her hospital bed. But two months ago, some highway commando had run a red light and smashed her car and injured her back. She'd been in traction ever since, but that was the least of her worries. Mrs. Bullock? Mrs. Bullock? Well, I'm Richard Diamond. Oh, I'm awfully glad you're here, Mr. Diamond. My lawyer said you might be able to help me. Well, I'll try. It's about my little girl. She's been staying with my sister while I've been here. And my ex-husband has suddenly taken her away. Well, why did he do that? He claims he has a right to custody as long as I'm in the hospital. Well, that's true, Mrs. Bullock. All things are being equal. All things are not equal, Mr. Diamond. He's careless and irresponsible. Marjorie doesn't want to stay with him. She needs love and care. She wants to stay with my sister. Well, how long have you been divorced? Two years. I can't for the life of me figure out what got into him. He's never really cared for Marjorie. Until the last three or four months, he never even bothered to see her on weekends. May I have his name, please? Arnold J. Bullock. Arnold J. Bullock. Uh, oh, what does he do? What's his business? Importing. It's in the phone book under his name. Uh-huh. Perhaps you should talk this over with him first. It's no use talking anything over with him. I tried for years to save our marriage, to establish a wholesome atmosphere for Marjorie. But all I got was empty promises, foul temper, and lies. Well, your lawyer must have informed him that he'll have to give the child back to you when you're able to care for her personally. That might not be for a long time. Mr. Diamond... You've got to get her back to my sister before he undoes everything I've worked so hard to give her. Well, I'd like to help you, Mrs. Bullock. Uh, I can't make any promises. You may be wasting your money. But what do you need? Well, some evidence proving that he's unfit for Marjorie to be with. Unless we can prove that, I'm afraid he has every right to the child. Has he ever been arrested? Does he have a criminal record? I don't know. Maybe. Arnold's been in some scrapes. Well, I'm afraid that's not much use. We'll need something a lot more concrete. Please. I'm not a vindictive woman. I don't want revenge. I just want my child back. And you don't know Arnie. He's capable of anything. I need your help. Please. Okay, I'll, uh... I'll dig into it. In the meantime, uh... Keep a chair up, huh? This contraption is about all I can do.
private detectives have various ingenious ways of checking on people. But in this case, I figured the simplest way was the best. Just ask a competitor. Well, sure, I know Ernie Bullock. His office is right down the hall, isn't it? Let's give you some pretty stiff competition. Are you asking? I'm asking. Frankly, I don't know how he pays his rent. What do you mean? Well, he's a journey come lately, and if you ask me, he'll go quickly. A man has to sell a little bit of merchandise once in a while to stay in business. Well, now he must sell something. Drop in the bucket. And those trips he makes, London, Amsterdam, Paris, it's a joke. The guy doesn't turn a nickel. Well, then how can he afford all those trips? I don't know. Maybe he's got a rich uncle to drop dead. Well, uh, thanks, Mr. Bernbaugh. It's all right. My uh, favorite financial spy helped me uncover Arnie's long history of defaulted loans, repossessed cars, and frequent games of hide-and-seek with skip traces. Now, this would have served my purpose beautifully, except for one very annoying detail. Three months ago, he'd suddenly paid off all his debts. His credit was as solid as Grant's tomb. <laughs> I picked up a small bargain in Dresden, China, and I treated myself to the dubious pleasure of meeting Arnie Bullock face to face. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? Well, I'm looking for some pieces to match this. Fred, I can't help you. Well, thank you very much. Well, he was wrong. Give me exactly what I wanted. His fingerprints on a perfect surface. I badgered Lieutenant McGowan to running a make on them for me. There you are, Rick. A report on Arnie Bullock. He has no record. Not even for jaywalk? What did you expect to find? I don't know, Max. Something to explain why his wallet's so fat, I guess. Who gave you the idea of breaking the law? His ex-wife. What makes her think so? Female intuition. Business must be slow these days. I ain't got a hunch she's right, Max. Male intuition. Now look, Rick. You swore once you'd hire out of a hotel, Dick, before you got mixed up with divorce cases. Yeah, I guess I did. This is different. Mac, the divorce is over. There's a child involved. The mother's all trussed up in a hospital bed, worried and scared half to death. I see. You think I'm getting soft? In your heart or in your head? Oh, thanks a lot. Tuesday when I started trailing Arnie Bullock. And on Wednesday, he yanked the sidewalks from under my feet by hopping a plane for Europe. However, the way he said goodbye to Marjorie's governess gave me new faith in female intuition. But I knew his weakness for governesses would never induce the court to take Marjorie away from him. The law considers a divorced man completely free to make the same mistake again. While Annie was away, the so-called governess devoted herself to Marjorie's education on his money. to drag the poor kid through all the best shops and beauty parlors in the city. And it was hardly what a child psychologist would consider a wholesome pastime, but uh, again, I knew the court could raise no objection. As long as this dame wasn't teaching the kid how to be a shoplifter. By Saturday, when I tailed Marjorie and her governess to the airport, I still faced what I'd always considered a very foolhardy proposition converting a woman's intuition into fact. Can't you sit still? 
flight number 206 from Philadelphia. Now, we'll look at the toy stand until they announce the plane. There were a hundred questions in my mind about Arnie Bullock, and it figured that Marjorie could answer some of them. But I had no idea how to break the ice. You can't waltz up to a ten-year-old and say, um, Hi, honey, haven't we met someplace before? Uh, nice toys, aren't they? Say, what does a little girl your age like the most? Dolls, uh, ping-pong sets, cap cuts, what? I'm not allowed to speak to strangers. I was hoping you'd help me with a tough problem. You see, I have to buy a gift for a little girl about your age, and I thought maybe you'd pick it out for me. You don't have to talk to me, just uh, point at what you want. <laughs> you mean that jump rope? Out of all these toys, that's what you want the most? It isn't the cost of the gift that counts. It's the love that goes with it. Well, that's true. But uh, why the jump rope? I left mine in Long Island. Daddy said he'd get me another one. But he forgot. Well, what's so important about an old piece of rope? Oh, you can play lots of games with it. Mabel, Mabel sets the table, and down by the river, down by the sea, and you can even find out who you're going to marry. Well, how do you do the last hog time? No. You do your ABCs till you miss. Well, then what? The letter you miss on is his initial. Then you guess who he is. My daddy says that's silly. Well, he forgets what most grown-up women do to get husbands. Have you found out who you're going to marry? The last time I played ABC, I missed on Q. <laughs> well, I guess you'll have to try again. Say, um, suppose I buy you that rope. Oh, no, thank you. K wouldn't like it. But, uh, well, who's K? She takes care of me when my daddy goes away. My parents are divorced. Well, where's your mother? In the hospital. That's too bad. I hope she feels better soon. So do I. I suppose you miss her a lot. Oh, yes. I guess you're pretty excited about being here to see your daddy, huh? Yes. But you don't sound like you mean that. I guess a little girl would rather live with her mother or aunt. Well, don't you love your daddy? Of course I do. Well, doesn't he love you? I guess so. Announcing the arrival of Flight 17, the ambassador from Paris. Flight 17, the ambassador, now arriving at gate 6. I have to go now. Bye. Bye. myself on the ability to see through situations. Margie hadn't exactly been jumping for joy at the prospect of meeting her father, and when she threw her pretty little arms around Arnie, I knew I hadn't seen through anything. On Wednesday, Arnie flew to Amsterdam, and on Thursday, Margie went to the hospital to visit her mother. I fixed things so that she'd be sent down. Yourself. How are you? Just fine. Well, what are you doing here? I was visiting my mother. Oh, well, that's nice. Uh, how is she? Well, she'll be all right. Say, so, how are you getting along with your father now? Oh, much better. Let's me wear lipstick and everything. I'm waiting for my governess to pick me up. Well, are you getting along better with her these days? Much. I know how to handle her. Oh. Well, how? I cry. That always throws her into a panic. Then I can make her do anything I want. Well, do you think 
think that's fair to take advantage of it like that. Was it fair of Daddy to take me away from Aunt Baby? She better get here soon. I have a TV show to watch at five. Say, what, uh, what ever happened to that jump rope? What? Well, you know, the one you left at your aunt's house. Oh, that. Who needs it? What is your daddy coming home again? Saturday. Say, why are you so interested in me? Well, my name begins with Q. <laughs> You're just saying that. Yeah, yeah, I am. But, uh, well, I like you. Is there anything wrong in that? I guess not. Are you going to the airport to meet your daddy? Naturally. That's how I get my present. By going to... It's a beautiful costume. Oh, here she is. Bye. Bye. I grant you that first Annie spoils Marjorie with expensive toys, clothes, and candy. Then he does a complete switch and plops her in front of a TV set and forgets him. But ladies, a court will not take a man's daughter away from him so long as he gives her food, shelter, and sees that she goes to school. Mr. Diamond, he doesn't love her. Well, then why did he take her away? Because he lost his temper. Over what? I wouldn't let that woman take Marjorie to the airport to meet him. Well, when was this? Saturday before last. Marjorie had been invited to a birthday party down the block. I kept her home so she could go. And that night he came and he took her away. Phoebe, you should have let her go to the airport. I promised Arnie. Oh, Jean, when does he ever keep his promises? Besides, why should Marjorie be a welcoming committee every time His Highness flies in from Europe? Well, that's a good question. Let's find out. <laughs> J. Bullock. You say he's trying to smuggle something in? That's right. Probably in the child's down. Are you sure? This man went through customs just two weeks ago and paid $6,700 duty on some jewelry. Somebody fouled up his plans. This time it might be different. Okay, we'll check him over. Oh, Charlie. If he really is smuggling something, don't you think we'll be able to get Marjorie back? I guarantee it. You probably won't even have to go to court. Announcing the arrival of Flight 400 from Amsterdam and London. Hey, Rick. Hmm? What makes you so sure this bird's a smuggler? He might be in a legitimate business abroad. No, he's not the time, man. I think you're dreaming. We're all set, Lieutenant. No, well, thanks. Let's get outside. Go on. I still don't see how the kid figures in. Well, the 
All I know is that Bullock was perfectly happy to let Marjorie live with the rat until she failed to meet him here one time. You're away up on cloud seven. Stop telling you, Mac. I'm handing you a juicy case for your charge. Well, if you got me all the way out here for nothing, I'll give you something free of charge. What's in here? A doll. Open it, please. big idea. We got a tip to check all toys coming through. I hope you're satisfied. You can file your claim for damages right over there. Never mind. Like you were wrong, Lieutenant. Sorry. Another one of those false alarms we get from cranks. Talk about female intuition. Yours is twice as bad. Look, is there any way you can stall them? How long? Two minutes. I'll try. Okay. I had two strikes on me. I had a very bad time for a squeeze plant. That was my only chance. I breezed past the toy stand, leaving one sales lady slightly unnerved. Then I went looking for a certain little girl who was expecting a doll. Hi there. Oh, hi. Uh, your daddy was detained inside. He asked me to get you this. Uh, Mr. Bullock, uh, the doll he had it was broken. Uh, don't you want your doll? Yes, but... But what? I'm not supposed to play the game with anyone but my father. Well, what game is that? It's a secret. Uh, maybe I can guess. Are you sure you have the right party? Yes, I'm sure. Uh, is it a trading game? Who are you anyway? Oh, what do you give your daddy for the, for the doll? A uh, kiss? A little package? Yes, sir. Uh, just a minute, but what, honey? We don't trade till we get home. Uh, well, I think we ought to trade now. Yeah. No! Oh, when did you get this? I'm not supposed to tell. Your daddy slipped it in your pocket when you went to hug him, didn't he? That's part of the game, isn't it? Yes. Charlie, there's a dame in a nurse's uniform running out at the front entrance. Hold her for questioning. Okay. Well, there you are. Mister, you've just saved the United States government about $10,000 worth of revenue. Oh, he saved a great deal more than that. What do you mean? It just can't be explained in terms of money. Come on, I'll help you make the arrest. Well, um, you can go home to Giant TV now. I can't. Now, don't you want to? Of course, but shouldn't I tell my daddy first? Well, I'll see that he knows. Are you a friend of his? I'm a friend of your mother's. Then you're a friend of mine. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Diamond. And thank you very much. Come on. Well, she was back where she belonged. The tough part was that one day she'd find out what kind of a guy her old man was. Well, anyway, she'd know something that few women ever learn. That is to beware of a man bearing costly gifts.